What's going on, YouTube? My name is Trent, if you don't know who I am, and I'm a diehard basketball fan. And if you're a diehard basketball fan just like me, this is the perfect channel for y'all. Subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications, and make sure you drop that like so we continue to grow this basketball community, and I appreciate that so, so much. Now, in today's video, we are going to be talking about the greatest eighth seed in NBA history, the Miami Heat. Um, obviously, in the regular season, the Miami Heat had a very up and down year, right? And eventually, they finished eighth in the Eastern Conference, and meaning they had to be in the plan. Now, the Miami Heat only had to win one game, right? Obviously, to get in the playoffs, and that's what they did. And they had the toughest matchup, right? The Milwaukee Bucks were the, like the toughest team in the Eastern Conference, right? And they finished off the year 58 and 24. And I understand Giannis was out for two games and stuff like that. But even without Giannis, the Milwaukee Bucks were so very deep, right? You know, you traded for Drew Holiday. You, you know, you got Chris Middleton back you know, from injury, obviously, right? You got Bobby Portis, you got Brooke Lopez, you got Joe Ingles, like Grayson Allen and Jay Crowder. The list continues to go on and on and on, right? They have the depth pieces, even without Giannis, right? And so even without the depth, I honestly thought, you know, maybe the Miami Heat still tend to struggle. But Jimmy Butler, once again, is the greatest postseason performer, that I have witnessed in a long, long time. And this dude continues the ball, right? He eliminates them in five games. And lastly, I do want to say is that Giannis was there for two of the games. So it's not like Giannis missed the whole series. It would have been a kind of different story if he did. But the fact that Giannis played the last two games and one of the, the, the two games, pretty much, the Milwaukee Bucks blow the lead, right? That last game, Milwaukee Bucks were up like 16 points in that third quarter. Well, fourth quarter, well, like five minutes left in the Miami Heat, locked down on defense, and Jimmy Butler was just Jimmy Butler. Now, heading on to the second round, they're playing the New York Knicks, which the New York Knicks gave the Cavaliers the work easily too, right? They believe they won 4-1, so did the Miami Heat. And obviously, we're not the favorites in this series. The New York Knicks are clearly going to be the favorites because we clearly don't have much respect on the Miami Heat, even though Jimmy Butler has been Jimmy Butler. But we go into game one on the road, right? On the road. This is the most important part. On the road, you know? And we already steal a game. So even if we lose game two, obviously, you don't want to come out there and lose games, but you already kind of did your job, right? And we won 108 to 101. I understand, you know, Julius Randle isn't playing and stuff like that. But also, Julius Randle was was hardly 100% during that Cavaliers series and hardly was doing anything. And we and they still won, you know? So I don't really use that as an excuse. Yes, he is a huge part. But if you want to talk about the Miami Heat, the Miami Heat are playing injured without their best players, right? Tyler Harrow, fractured hand. Victor Oladipo, then with another injury, like... Their depth has been short, like cut in half pretty much. And now they got to rely on other players that haven't really played much in the regular season this year, right? You know, Duncan Robinson was a huge piece a few years ago, and that's when he got the contract, you know, extension and stuff like that. But he's no longer as that Duncan Robinson that we all know. But guess what? The Heat mentality is always going to be there no matter what. They came out there and did their thing, right? They beat them in the second half. 31 to 27 their defense was incredible they only let them score 20 points in that third and then 26 in that fourth compared to the first quarter where they scored 32 right so the three other quarters they never scored 30 plus points again and that's just lockdown defense that is just good coaching and that's just your team is disciplined and they're focused right and now when you look at you know the miami heat's postseason stats jimmy butler's on another level right Dude, Jarrett's in 35.5 points a game, 6.8 rebounds, 4.7 assists, 1.8 still. Mind you, Jimmy Boy is averaging 35 points. There's not another player on this team that's averaging 20 plus points. Not even another player on this team that's averaging 20 plus points. Just think about that. Jimmy Butler is literally having his backpack on and he's doing this. Come come on the ride. You know what I'm saying? And he's beating some really, really good teams, right? Bam out of bio. You know, he finally had a good game in the Bucks series, the last game, but you know, inconsistent once again, only putting up 17 points a game at eight and a half rebounds and four point five assists. But one thing that I am liking, I'm seeing consistency from this team. I'm seeing the depth players, the role players finally stepping up. Like Gabe Vincent has been huge for us ever since he got in the starting lineup. And Kevin Love, right? I think the Miami Heat are 4-0. Oh. And so, you know, Spo finally changed the rotations up, right? But Caleb Martin coming off the bench. Caleb Martin has been doing his thing, being the nice two-way player he is. Even Kyle Lowry's doing his thing. Duncan Robinson's finally knocking some shots down. This team is finally getting their groove, and they're getting their groove at the perfect time. So... Jimmy Butler is going to be, continue to be Jimmy Butler, but if Bam Adebayo just can average 25 and 10 points, I honestly don't really see anybody stopping this team. And like I said, there was no pressure on this team at all because they were at AFC. So the fact that they're three games away from making it to the Eastern Conference Finals, 
this tells you that the regular season, sometimes that doesn't matter. As long as you're on the right pace, no, right time, and, you know, catch fire at the right time, this is what happens. So, once again, shout out to the Miami Heat for losing their two best players, or one of their best players coming off the bench, Victor Oladipo, losing Tyler Harrow, and still competing, still winning games, right? So, let me know in the comments section what you think. I love y'all, and I'm out. Peace.